Today, I'm going to show you the easiest way possible to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. This is so easy, you're not going to believe it. Stay tuned. Do you like saving money? Of course you do. You need to check out today's sponsor, Slick Deals. Slick Deals has a free browser extension available to make saving money online even easier. When you're on a website, just click on the browser extension and it shows you all the deals available for that website. This browser extension will automatically search through all of the most up-to-date coupon codes to find you the best savings based on what you currently have in your cart. Check out this deal I found on Foster & Grant glasses. I love these glasses, but end up breaking a pair at least once a year. Maybe I should buy two. So, follow the link in the description below and get the free Slick Deals browser extension and start saving money today. Unless you don't like saving money. This is so easy, it's gonna make your head spin. So we're back today with this potato of a system here to upgrade to Windows 11 yet again. The process that I showed you in the last video worked really well, but I got a lot of people complaining that it was too complicated. So I wanted to find an easier way to do it that was just as reliable, and I found a process that was so easy, I couldn't believe it actually worked. This process requires you to run one script prior to installing Windows 11. There's also a few tweaks you have to make in Windows 11 once it's installed, so make sure that you watch the whole video before trying this on your system. Also, I don't recommend doing this on a system that you use every day. We don't know what the future of unsupported hardware is going to be with Windows 11. But like I said, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'm going to give you my opinion on where I think this is going. Now before we go any further, I have to put a disclaimer here. This does not constitute pirating Windows. You still have to have a valid license for Windows 10 to qualify for a free upgrade to Windows 11. So your current Windows 10 system has has to be activated for this to work. This is not in any way software piracy. So let's shut down my main system so we can get this potato hooked up and we'll get to it. You know, every time I hook up this system, I realize how much better the other one looks. You know, it'll be back soon though. Trust me. So what we got to go over first real quick is that this system is running a completely updated copy of Windows 10. At least it's updated up to the making of this video. I ran update on it last night and tested it out a few more times and it still works great. I'm also using the most current ISO from Windows 11. So we at least know that as of the filming of this video, this method works. So let's get into it. All right, so the very first thing that we want to do before we follow this guide is make sure your computer isn't supported in Windows 11. It would be real silly to follow this guide if your computer was supported. So go ahead and click on your start menu and find this PC health check. If you don't have this, you can always download it from Microsoft, but most systems have it on it. So I would look for it if you don't have it and go ahead and download it. And then click right here where it says introducing Windows 11 and hit check now. And then it does the check and this is what it comes up with. It fails every single controversial requirement for Windows 11. Now, I did this on purpose. The reason why I'm using a system that fails every controversial requirement is because there are different ways to install Windows 11 on unsupported computers. And some of them are actually really easy. And I've had a lot of people comment about those other ways telling me that I should just do that instead of the complicated way I did it before. However, those other ways simply don't work when you're trying to upgrade a computer that fails every controversial requirement. And that's why I had to do things a little bit differently. However, this way I'm gonna show you today does work on every system I've tried it on so far. So let's get to it and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we know this doesn't support Windows 11, so we're gonna go ahead and close this right here, and we're gonna go ahead and open up this website right here. This is GitHub, and we're looking at the project Media Creation Tool Bat, and I'll go ahead and leave a link to this project in the description below. However, this project isn't actually what we're gonna be using to install Windows 11. However, if you want, this is a really cool little script that will allow you to download pretty much any version of Windows 10 that's ever been made. So if you're looking looking for an older build of Windows 10 and you don't know where to find it, this is where I would go. This script is pretty cool. 
we're gonna use a script that comes with this package right here, but we don't need the whole package. All we need is the one script in order to install Windows 11. So scroll up here and click on the folder where it says Bypass 11 and click on that. And then we want the skip TPM check on dynamic update. So we're gonna click on that, and this is the script that we actually want. But we don't need to download it. All we have to do is come over here and click on this little copy raw contents icon right here. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and click on the start button and type in note to open up Notepad. And we're just gonna paste what we copied from the website into Notepad right here. And you don't need to modify anything, leave it exactly the way it is. And then go ahead and click on file, save as, and then I'm gonna save this to my desktop, but you save it anywhere you want to. And then, but what we have to do is come down and change where it says save as file type. We have to change that from text to all files. And then from here, go ahead and give it any name you want. I'm gonna call mine Windows 11 install. And then go ahead and type period and use the file extension CMD. And then once you do that, go ahead and hit save. And then from there, we can go ahead and close this. And now that we have the script here, there's one more thing we're gonna need. We need a copy of Windows 11 if we wanna install it. So for that, go ahead and open up another tab here, and we're gonna search for Windows 11 Media Creation Tool. Go ahead and hit enter. And then you should find it fairly high up in the Google search results. It's right here, but I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below so you can find it there as well if you want to. So we're gonna click on that and we wanna scroll down to the second button here where it says create Windows 11 installation media. So we're gonna go ahead and hit download and it's gonna take it a second to download. And then once it does, we can go ahead and click on that download and fire it up. Go ahead and hit yes to the security warning. And then it's gonna take a minute to get things ready and for that, we can just sit back and wait for a minute. So at this point, we're just creating the ISO itself. So once we create the ISO, we're not gonna modify it at all. It's gonna be the stock ISO that comes from the media creation tool. So if you've already made this before, you know what I'm talking about, it's pretty easy. Okay, from here, you go ahead and click on accept and then give it a little bit more time. Unfortunately, if you're doing this on a potato, it might take longer in some instances. It depends on how fast your system is. This computer isn't bad, but it's still a potato. All right, from this screen, I would go ahead and just leave it on use recommended options for this PC and go ahead and hit next. And then we wanna create ISO file. You can do this from a USB flash drive as well, but with an ISO file, we don't waste a flash drive. So you might as well do it from an ISO file. So go ahead and click next. It's gonna ask you where you wanna save this and you can pick anywhere you want. I'm gonna choose desktop for mine and then just go ahead and push the save button. So at this point, it's gonna take a minute to create your ISO file. And this is all gonna be dependent on your internet connection and the speed of your system itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and meet you back in the system once the ISO is downloaded. Okay, here we go. We have the Windows ISO downloaded. And at this point, this is the process that we're gonna use to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. All we have to do at this point is go ahead and double click on this script right here. It's gonna ask for security permissions. Go ahead and hit yes. And then it's gonna open PowerShell and do the things that it needs to do. And eventually you can either hit enter or it'll stop on its own. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and double click on the Windows ISO. It'll automatically mount it in Windows and then we can double click on setup. Go ahead and hit yes to the security prompt. And Windows setup is starting. Now at this point, you should be able to follow the installer like you would on any other supported system for Windows 11. So go ahead and get Windows 11 installed and I'll meet you in Windows 11 and I'll show you some of the other tweaks that I would recommend making once you get it done. Windows 11, you have to admit, that was really easy, wasn't it? But don't flip off yet. There's a few more things that we need to do to make Windows 11 a little bit more reliable. Let's do that now. Okay, so for the most part, everything should work right out of the box. Like for instance, one of the problems we had in the last one is Windows security not working. But as you can see from here, Windows security opens up fine and the antivirus works just like it's supposed to. So we don't have to mess with that now. However, there are a few problems if you right click down here and you open up the Windows terminal, from Windows Terminal, if you go down here and try to hit settings, it just doesn't work. It wants you to install settings from the Microsoft Store. That's kind of ridiculous. So the way we're gonna fix this is we're just gonna reinstall Windows Terminal. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and open up whatever browser that you use. I'm gonna open up Chrome, and we're gonna go to the Microsoft Terminal Project on Microsoft's GitHub page. This is the official page for the Terminal Project from Microsoft because you know, 
Microsoft owns GitHub, so they got a lot of stuff on here. You should check it out sometime. It's kind of neat. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this in the description so you don't have to search for it. But once you get to this page, just go ahead and scroll down and go over to the right here where it has releases. And you want to go ahead and click on the latest release right here. And then from here, go ahead and scroll down and we want to click on the one right here for Windows 11. So go ahead and click that there and it'll download it for you. And once it's downloaded, go ahead and just click on it. And that'll open up the installer here and you can just hit update to update your version of terminal on the system. And after that terminal should open up and if we click on here and click settings, settings magically works. And you know, at this point, Windows 11 runs pretty good. In fact, Windows 11 runs on this system just as good as Windows 10 does. However, one of the reasons I don't recommend doing this on your daily system though, is because Microsoft has threatened that unsupported systems will not have access to Windows Update. I've been thinking about this a lot, and I think they're gonna use exactly the same tactics in the future for build updates as they're using now to stop us from installing Windows 11 in the first place. However, I believe that with workarounds like this, we'll be able to get around these limitations in the future. I don't know for sure yet, but I will definitely test this script when the next build of Windows 11 comes out to see if it allows me to upgrade this computer here. Personally, I think we'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, as long as we have Windows 10 in support, I don't recommend upgrading an unsupported system to Windows 11. The primary reason why I do these videos is to show that it is possible. And I think it will continue to be possible after Windows 10 loses support. When that day comes, I will absolutely recommend people upgrade to Windows 11, even on unsupported hardware. So if you followed this guide, and you currently have Windows 11 running on your system, then watch this video here where I show you how to de-bloat Windows 11 so you have an even better experience on that potato of a computer you're using. Have a great day.